I have a problem. The metal walls in this room make the audio that I record kind of echoey. And breaking down whole sheets of plywood is a massive pain. Cutting down whole sheets of plywood on the table saw is awkward, not all that accurate, sometimes kind of dangerous, and in the case of cross-cutting plywood, well, for me, it's impossible. I have no room in here to cut down an eight foot long sheet of plywood sideways on the table saw. So what I can do and have been doing to break down whole sheets of plywood is use an edge guide like this one with my circular saw. But this setup is annoying. For starters, I have to account for the offset between the edge of the base that rides along the edge guide and the blade itself, which is what I made this little piece for. This block is the exact width between the edge of the saw base and the blade itself. So I use this, butt it up next to the edge guide to line up next to the marks that I've marked on the plywood. But that isn't the whole solution because sometimes when I clamp down this edge guide, well, it moves out of position, which is annoying. And on top of that, I still have to line it up and line up anything at all with a mark that I made on the plywood. And that's the same problem I'd have with a proper plunge cut track saw. Sure, with one of those, it's as easy as slapping on your track and then making the cut with wherever you slap down the track, but you still have to line up the track to marks you measured out on the plywood, which is an inconvenience. Yeah, it's a small inconvenience, but it's still an inconvenience, and for me, any inconvenience makes me not want to do something. I wanted a solution that was as simple as lining up the fence on a table saw, where you just line up a needle to a mark on a measuring tape. So the solution I designed to this problem is this. It's a saw track. It's a different type of edge guide. Yeah, I know, you're blown away. But that's not the special part. This is just a different type of edge guide. The special part is these measuring rails. So let's say I want to cross cut this plywood 30 inches from the edge. All I have to do is set the stop blocks on both of these measuring rails to 30 inches, clamp down the stop blocks so they don't move, clamp both of these measuring rails to the edge of my saw track, then pull the saw track so that both of the stops are butted up against the edge of the plywood, and boom. And just like that, we've cut out a small sheet of plywood that is 30 inches wide, which is good. That means this track works. Now, if you'd like to see how I made this slightly fancy saw track with the measuring rail system, well, that's what this video is for. If you'd like to build one of these for yourself, well, you're in luck because for the first time ever, I've broken new ground here and I've made a set of plans, step-by-step -step plans, and they'll be available and a link in the description below the video. So check those out if you'd like to. I'll touch more on the plans later, but for now, let's get on with the build. This entire project can be extracted from a single quarter inch thick sheet of plywood. I'm using Baltic birch for this because it's nice and stable and it has five layers and everything, but you can use whatever you want to. Although I highly recommend this stuff. And the first step is to cut this down into strips we need on the table saw. Since managing whole sheets of plywood on the table saw is difficult, hence why we're making this project to begin with, I recommend doing what I'm doing here and cutting the strips down on the table saw slightly oversized for the first pass and then running them through again at their proper dimension for an even width. This strip is for the base of the track, these two strips are for the guide rail, this is the dovetail clamping rail, these two strips are for the measuring rails, and this strip is for miscellaneous parts. I mentioned this in the plans, but I'll mention it here too. The dimensions of these three strips is determined by the dimensions of your circular saw. On my circular saw, the distance between the edge of the base and the edge of the motor is about two inches. And these two strips are for the guide rail, the part that the saw will rub against on the track. They're two inches wide because of that distance. And the base of my track, I cut to eight inches wide because I need about two inches for the dovetail clamping rail. I need two inches for the guide rail. And the remaining four inches is the distance between the edge of my saw base and the saw blade itself. It's actually slightly less than four inches, but I need to cut this part a little bit oversized because we're gonna cut the edge off with the saw itself later on to make a zero clearance track. The next step before we glue the track together is to cut a 15 degree angle on one edge of the dovetail clamping rail. Because the track I'm making now is for cross-cutting plywood rather than ripping it, I'm going to be cutting the track base, clamping rail, and guide rail strips down to 55 inches long 
instead of leaving them at the full eight feet. Next up, time to glue the guide rail strips together and then glue them to the base track. Glue the clamping rail that we just cut an edge on, an angled edge on to the base track, and then glue the two strips together that make up the measuring rails. We're laminating a lot today. Now notice that I am using a pin nailer to clamp all this stuff together. You don't have to have a pin nailer for this project. You can just clamp everything together with clamps while the wood glue dries. But having a pin nailer makes this a lot easier. So much easier, in fact, that I bought this pin nailer specifically for this project. Now to cut some small parts out of the strip, we designated for such things. These two little pieces need a 15 degree angle cut on one edge of them, so we'll do that now with a sled. And I'll glue all these small parts together now so the glue has a chance to dry overnight. The glue on all this stuff has had a chance to dry overnight. So now while the table saw blade is still tilted over at a 15 degree angle, let's cut the other angle on the outside edge of the clamping rail on the base track here. And then we'll go through these small parts and clean them up on the disc sander a wee bit. As of right now, these little stop blocks we just made don't exactly slide on the measuring rail smoothly, or at all. They just kind of get stuck there. So before we cut this big strip in half to make two measuring rails, I'm going to sand all four sides of it down to make it nice and smooth, and sand down the insides of these stop blocks with the little strip sander here to make everything nice and smooth, give everything some clearance so it can all be all slidey. There we go, much better. The next thing I want to do is drill a hole through here and a counterbore on the bottom to fit this bolt in here to make this a proper stop block. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little scrap piece of quarter inch plywood in here to keep from squishing this down with the drill bit. These stop blocks are now done. So now let's prepare the measuring rail that they're riding on by just cutting it in half and cutting an angle on one end of it. Now you can see how all this goes together. The measuring rail butts up to the edge of the track like this. And then this piece, which will be fastened to the measuring rail, slides back to clamp the measuring rail onto the edge of the track. Now the next step is to drill three slotted holes into the top of this to fasten it to the measuring rail. The hook for the toggle clamp latch thing is going to attach right here, but as it is right now, this hook is just slightly thicker than the plywood. So we need to take this over to the bench vise and smash this down a little bit. Now to assemble it, I just need to put everything roughly where it's going to go. Mark where this part of the latch needs to screw in, roughly. Unscrew this part of the latch. Screw it in place. Screw the slidey piece back into the latch. Adjust it until it's tight enough to clamp down without these screws in place. 
like that, and then drive these screws into place. These are three quarter inch screws with flat tops. And unless I over tighten those screws, it should slide. I over tighten them. Now it should slide freely like that. Clamped, unclamped. Perfect. Now to do it all a second time. Perfect. Before I do the next step, I need to cut the zero clearance edge off the edge of the track with the circular saw. Now to add the measuring tape to the measuring rail, we need to measure from the edge of the track that we just cut off with the circular saw. Mark a common measurement. Here I'm using 16 inches. Will probably vary with your setup. Mark the line across. And then line up the measuring tape to the mark that I just made. By the way, if you're curious what sort of measuring tape I'm using here, I'll have a link to it in the description, as well as everything else I've used in this project. And there are affiliate links if you want an easy way to support me. Now I just need to chisel a very shallow channel at the top of these stop blocks to allow for the thickness of the measuring tape. And we're done. As an added bonus, I buffed paste wax onto the top of the track where the saw glides to make it glide more smoothly. And I added adhesive back sandpaper to the underside of the track so it won't slip and slide around on the piece of plywood that you're cutting. The natural next step would be to use this track I just built to make a test cut onto this sheet of plywood, but I already did that. Remember that cut I made at the very beginning of this video when I was promoting this design? That was the first test cut of this saw track. And it works, I mean, this came out 30 inches, just like how I said it, so that's good. So what I'll do instead is show you the first track I made. This is the rough draft slash prototype track that I made to make sure that everything went together the way I thought it was going to and I could test it and everything before I made a build video and plans and all that jazz. And it's pretty much identical to the other track with one big exception, it's a full eight feet long. This one is for ripping plywood. So let's use it to rip this plywood. I've got the measuring stop set to 30 inches. Let's cut a 30 inch sheet of plywood, shall we? Ta-da! So there you go, there's my solution to making a saw edge guide much easier to set up and use, to make breaking down whole sheets of plywood a quick and easy process, and something that I won't dread every time I have to do it. Now, if you like this track system with the magical, magical, with the measuring rails over there and you would like to build one yourself, like I said at the beginning of the video, there's a set of plans that I made. They're step-by-step -step plans. They're available for purchase in a link in the description below the video. And also, like I said at the beginning of the video, I've never made a set of plans before. So if you do end up purchasing the plans, well, first of all, thank you. You're helping support me, but also, Please, if you have any constructive criticism, any constructive feedback, let me have it because I want to improve my plan making skills for the future. This was a relatively simple project and I have some much more complex projects in the future that I would like to try to make plans for so that I can share my, some of my tool ideas with the world. So anyway, thank you, plans. I'm sure you'll see me use these tracks in the future, but at the very least, if you don't see me use them, you'll definitely see them because I've hung them up around my tool wall here. So they're on prominent display. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.